tired of doing paper audits where you write in paper, take photos with your phone, compile, and summarize them later before sending the report? Today I will show you how to make an audit app that works even when you're offline. Our audit app records the auditor name, audit date, audit items, photos, remarks, and assessment. It temporarily stores the data on your device when you're offline, then gives you the option to upload the data when you're connected online. This is useful to situation when you have low to no internet connectivity when conducting audit on remote sites. Without further ado, let's start creating our audit app. Let's start by creating a blank canvas. This time, we will be using modern controls, so let's first turn on the modern controls in the settings. Let me start by creating a sample layout for our audit app. You can copy my layout or you can create your own style, depending on what works best for you. Now let's add a button to create our audit items by using the clear collect function. You can also put this code in the app on start formula instead, so it will automatically create the audit items once you start the app. Using the clear collect function, we will create a table of our sample audit items. We now have a sample table of audit items. Let's now put our collection data to our gallery and arrange them for audit. Inside the gallery, let's put some input to create records for our audit. We will be inserting text input for our audit remarks, radio control for assessment, and add picture for evidence photos. Now, to save our record, we will put the collect function on our input. At the onChange property of a radio control, use the collect function inside the collection enclosed with open and close parenthesis. Let's create a name for our record, which in this case is audit record. Follow it with comma and open and close brackets. Inside the brackets, type the following. This will create our collection based from the existing items and our new inputs. Please note the names should be the same as our column names in our SharePoint list, which we will use later. We can now put records on our audit app, and every time we do changes on our assessment input, a new record will be created. Let's create a table to see our audit record. Create a new container and inside that container, insert a table and connect it with our audit tracker collection. On the edit fields, select the following columns to show our data. As you can see, here is the record we just created. To close this window, let's make a pop-up window by creating a button that sets the visibility property of our window to true or false. But what if we change the same item a twice or thrice because of a mistake? When auditing, we want to avoid multiple record on one item and just want the latest one. But first, let's clear our data by making a clear button. Inside the onSelect property of our clear button type clear, open, and close parenthesis, and type the name of the collection we want it inside the parenthesis. Now, we will add the if and update function on the onChange property of our input aside from the collect function. Add the following if, isempty, and filter function before our collect formula inside the onChange property of our input control. Next, let's add the update function in our if else statement, which will happen if our item is not empty. 
instead of collect. Use the update, first, and filter function to update our record instead of adding to it. Our formula now creates a new record if it's empty and update the item if it's not empty. Now, you might be wondering what if the app closed? Will the data still be saved? Not yet. We still have to put one remaining code so the data will be saved and load automatically. Let's go back once again to our onChange property. On the bottom of our formula, add the following save data function. Inside the save data function, type the record we just collected and create a name for the local file to save. But this function only works in the app and does not work in the browser. To avoid errors showing up when using it in browser, put the following if else statement so it does nothing on browser using the host function. Let's copy the same formula to the onChange property of our text input and add picture control. Then, on the onSelect property of our refresh button, let's add the load save data function. Copy the save data formula and change the save to load. Now, you must be wondering why there are two image media and why the photo is not showing. Let's fix it by removing this background of our add picture control. This image is the one uploaded to our add picture control, not the one saved in our audit record. To check if the photo we add is really saved in our collection data, in the image property of our image one media, use the lookup function, type the collection where we'll conduct its search, the filter condition on what row, and the column name, which in this case is photo. We can now confirm if our image is saved in our collection. Now, there are cases when we want to check our image by enlarging it. Let's put a pop-up window that shows our image enlarged. Insert a new container and change it background. Insert image media and button control, just like we did in our table pop-up. Put the set function on the onSelect of our buttons to create a variable that changes its value to true or false, then change the visibility property of our container to that variable. We will put the true function to the onSelect property of our image. Now, on the enlarged image in our pop-up window, type our gallery name, dot selected, dot name of our image media, dot image. Here's our pop-up image. Let's now put a button when we want to delete a record from our data. Insert a button control and on the onSelect property, use the remove and lookup function and type the following. Our record is now deleted from our table. We also want to reset the controls to blank after we remove the record. To do that, add the following reset functions to our delete button. For the last part, we want to send these data to our SharePoint list when we are back online. Let's now connect our app to our SharePoint list. As you can see, our SharePoint list have the exact same column names as our table. Let's insert a new button that will send our data to SharePoint list when clicked. On the onSelect property of our button, we will use the patch and show columns function to send our local table to our SharePoint list all at once. For detailed explanation, watch my video on how to send data from Power Apps to SharePoint List. Let's now check if we can send our data to our SharePoint List. There you go. We now have a working audit app that works even when you're offline and summarize all your records and images in one go. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more Power Apps tips and tutorials. Thank you for watching.